fast for me, that's for sure. Uh, I can hang in there for a few seconds. Uh, anyway, uh, Tony Winston here, Jazz Piano College, uh, going to work on the song I'll Remember April. Song's a little too fast for me. I'm playing along with this Jamie Abersold uh, recording, and I'm noticing that it's Kenny Barron on piano, Ron Carter on bass, Grady Tate on drums, and there's no way I'm ever going to keep up with those guys. Like I've said many times before, if you want to practice, you know, the trio situation, uh, there's nothing better than the Jamie Abersold recordings because he gets the top players and, uh, you know, it's the most authentic stuff out there for sure. a little bit about the Barry Harris uh, little thing that he does a lot. I don't know what you call this. It's that little thing. If anybody knows what that's called, please let me know. And he does that when he gets to the B-flat chord. But the reason I think this is a good song for beginners, at a reasonable tempo, of course, is that You've got four measures of G major 7th or G major 6th, either one. So you've got plenty of time to develop your ideas. You don't have to think about changing chords too quickly. And then you got four measures of G minor. You can switch to an A minor once in a while if you want to, but basically just a G minor there. And then we've got some... Uh, you know, three six two fives or two five three sixes coming up. We've got A minor. You know, I was listening to Kenny Barron. He just plays A minor seventh and D seventh. Doesn't play that flat five. And sometimes I hear the minor seven flat five, but plenty of times it's B minor seven and E, and then straight two five one back into G. All right, that's the A section. The song is in unusual form because it's an A-B-A -A type of song. It's got the A section, just goes once. Let's take a look at some of the possibilities. So throwing that diminished chord in there. Yes, it's a diminished chord with the whole tone extension. You don't have to do that, of course. G minor. And you know, for beginning improvisers, you, you want to just explore patterns. Um, of course, you're always trying to think of good melodies. Uh, but if you can't come up with any, use patterns. So some typical patterns. Stair staircase patterns three notes. Uh -huh. uh, little things like... You know, those are easy things to do fast also, so you know, if you're trying to keep up with these guys, you know... That's something that you can... It's easier to do than a scale, actually. When we get to A minor, and you know, a fast song like this... practice your two five ones and you want to use and I'm going to call this the diminished slash altered scale all right because we're going to use this on a dominant seventh chord and the two scales are so much alike you've got the uh, flat nine and the sharp nine and the third and the sharp five all right so those are the, uh, the same notes in either scale now the diminished scale will go up like this and the altered scale will go up like this. All right, so diminished scale has these four notes, altered scale has these, and so it doesn't really matter what you do up in there, right? 
because every note is covered, I think, except for, except for C sharp. So, and and that's a passing tone. So, you know, you can really do anything you want up there. But down here in the bottom, and I did a tutorial on this song the other day called uh, "The Night We Called It a Day," and it's in the same key. I was suggesting that, you know, if you learn the melodies to some of these standards, it will give you ideas for good melodies to use in your improv improvisation. So. You see, that's part of the diminished scale. You don't have to think of it that way, but it, but, but it is. Work that in. So also the fact this song is in the key of G kind of sets it apart from a lot of other songs. We don't really get all that many songs in the key of G. There's a few ones like, what's that one? Uh, can't remember the name of it, but it's uh, anthropology or ornithology or orthonology or optometry or, uh, you know, something like that. I'm getting a little off track, so I might as well do my book review. So I was on vacation, and I read these two books. And uh, one of them's by David McCullough, and it's called The Wright Brothers. Of course, it's about, you know, the Wilbur and Orville Wright and their sister Catherine, who is actually plays a pretty important part in, the, in their story. They first flew in about, what was it, 1903 or something? By 1969, you know, what is that, uh, like 60 years later, they're going to the moon. This is actually the story of John Glenn and the, uh, the space program and how we were kind of like, you know, in a, in a race with Russia uh, during the Cold War to, you know, s to see who would win the space race. Anyway, uh, of course, David McCullough is a great writer, and you can't go wrong reading this book. I actually have some pictures that my, I think it was my great-grandfather took, uh, back in around 1905, 1906, and uh, of the uh, Wright airplane and the, you know, the guys flying it and the Wright brothers flying it. And so uh, I'm going to post a few of those pictures. So here they are. Um, and then this book, I think, is pretty well written as well. Uh, it really focuses mostly on John Glenn, though it does talk about the other uh, six astronauts that were in the program. You know, the kind of the interesting thing about John Glenn was that, you know, he was the first American to orbit the Earth. But, you know, he was a fighter pilot. And, I mean, he was really, he was really gung-ho, you know. I mean, shooting down em enemy aircraft in, uh, in Korea and, you know, trying to save one of his buddies that uh, his plane went down. Pretty amazing story. And, I mean, he was really, you know, a red-blooded killer there for, in the beginning. And then he was, you know, really the face of the space program. You know, he was the most articulate and, you know, the press always focused on what he was doing. And he only made that one flight. Again, I don't know what year it was, but uh, 62 or something, orbiting the Earth three times. Flew one more time in the space shuttle when he was, I don't know, 70 or something. And... Uh, you know, he petitioned the space program to do some experiments on uh, older people in space. So he got to go back to space one more time. And it was probably a much more leisurely trip, you know. I mean, he was up there for several days. Yeah, Mercury Rising, John Glenn, John Kennedy. And, yeah, it talks a lot about John Kennedy, and uh, who was not really that big into the space program. It was really uh, LBJ, uh, Lyndon Johnson, who was more pro the, the space program. Uh, back to the song. In fact, right there would be a good spot to use that diminished chord. Then we're gonna, gonna then we're gonna go to G minor. You know, you can maybe try a little drop two here if you're not going too fast. And like I said before, A minor is perfectly fine. And also B minor. And then the 
reason it's such a popular song in jazz jam sessions is because of all the two five ones. And the six. And we'll do it again. And this is where Barry Harris uses that. So in this particular spot in the song, when you're improvising, you might not want to do the diminished scale there because the original melody is a nine, and you know, the diminished scale has the flat nine and the sharp nine in it. So you might try just staying in, in the scale of G. And you could do some little enclosures and things like that. And then, here comes the trouble spot now. How many jazz standards can you play in the key of E, you know? <laughs> you see what I mean? This is where, you know, if you practice stuff around the cycle and get to some of these more obscure keys, uh, you can start to gain some proficiency in them. But it's only when you l take uh, your jazz standards and play them in, in these keys and just stick to these keys. Don't play in the other keys. Just stay in E, you know. Spend a month doing it. Well, I mean, not exclusively doing that, but spend a lot of time just in the key of E, you know. Play all your solo, play all your standards in this key. completely wrong. Play all your standards in E for a while, and then when you get to this one line in I'll Remember April, you'll feel fairly comfortable. Now, I was working on the song uh, uh, Waltz for Debbie, and you know, there's that one spot where he just switches into, goes to A major all of a sudden, and I always stumble around like crazy in that spot. So, I mean, I spent, I don't know how much time just playing every standard I know in the key of A, and... Uh, you know, so many songs in the key of F will end up in the key of A for a minute or two and then, and then jump back. Uh, and, you know, I just wanted to feel like, you know, I wasn't uh, in some foreign country when I was improvising in A. So you've got to do the same thing here and really work on the key of E. You're not going to get it just by playing this one little snippet here or by going around the cycle and go, you know... You can go around the cycle and, you know, test yourself to see if you're feeling comfortable in, in a particular key. But you're not going to learn to play in that key unless you play in that key a lot. So anyway, that's my lecture for the day. And then we're back to the A section again. 
All right, so let's construct a few lines on two five ones that we have uh, in this song. Let's let's do A minor first here. There's a two five one in G. Now, if you're looking for that diminished scale, it's right there. So if you're th if you're thinking A minor, I think you really should be thinking G major here. Yeah. You know, put a little blues in or something like that. But right when you get to here, you know, think of the G major scale in terms of like the uh, the diminished scale. So it won't have G in it, <laughs> but it'll have. All right. So think about the G scale. Right there's the diminished scale. Above G is a good place to start, too, on that diminished scale. You know, what I'm trying to do is maybe suggest that you kind of think of these two five ones slightly different when you're talking about improvisation. Um, you know, we're taught to think a, uh, a Dorian scale, which is really the G major scale. So you're thinking of a Dorian scale, and then you're thinking of maybe the diminished scale. Right? But if you just think all in the key of G, and then think of you know this little part of the G major scale, right? It's not really the G major scale, but and then maybe change it to that. So always thinking in the key of G, just with kind of different notes of the G major scale. So G major scale, and those weird notes of the G major scale. You know, it's like a fifth. I'm still thinking the G here. So the fifth, the sharp five, the flat seven and the seven, and the sharp one, right? Now we go to the key of uh, B flat. So let's think of it the same way. We're thinking of B flat, and we're going to think about, you know, right? B flat, but then put this part in the B flat scale, and even this. All right, so. Bop scale, you know, has a little bit of that in there, so. I'm just thinking about the B flat major scale and making a little alteration here, but still really thinking in B flat. Another little trick I've found when switching from one key into another and you're doing a two five one is don't think too much about the two and the five. Think about the one where you're going and you know even use some blues ideas or something because it'll it'll help you kind of stay grounded. So you know you got F sharp. Right now I was kind of thinking of that concept in the key of E, but let me do more uh, jazzy stuff here. Now just think of G. You know, do something kind of cool in G. All right now, see if we can work that into the line. That's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to stick that line on the end.
where I found that to be particularly useful is like if you're playing uh, Joy Spring and you're trying to go from the uh, key of F to the key of F sharp, you know, you're going like... Uh, blues riff over a two, five, one, see? <laughs> and how can you feel comfortable doing that? You've got to practice a lot in the key of F sharp. So you have, you know, some comfortable stuff that's in your fingers. And, you know, that's the problem when you go into some of these odd keys is it just doesn't lay under your fingers because you just haven't done it enough. And then when you get back to the key that you're familiar with, you know, you go nuts again. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe and like if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you again. Bye.